Peace, y'all. Johnny Fastlane here. So, Jay-Z brings out Nas, Cameron, and Jim Jones last night. Judge Brinkley stops Meek Mill from going to Toronto. And Jade is still riding for her man 6ix9ine. Let's talk hip-hop. Yo, this is fire, right? Yo, first of all, Webster Hall, right, is... um. A little spot that's in New York, it's in Manhattan, right? Uh, everybody in New York knows about it, right? Webster Hall is like famous for having all kind of shows. I mean, Prince was at, a, at Webster Hall one time. Um, Eric Clapton was at Webster Hall one time. Uh, Jay-Z been to Webster Hall like a bunch of times, right? So about a year ago, they announced like Webster Hall was like shutting down, right? And I thought that they were shutting down like forever, like permanently, right? So like you got this class classic venue that everybody always goes to in New York that's now going to be shut that's like them shutting down like the Apollo right the only difference is like the Apollo is like more like geared towards like black culture and Webster Hall is geared towards everything but a lot of you know cultural hip-hop events happen there too right even parties and stuff like that not just performances right so anyway right so Jay-Z um Webster Hall opens back up obviously you know so they didn't shut down completely uh they just shut down for renovation so the first night that they were back open right and this is like a small nice like intimate venue right so where Jay-Z could sell out uh, a huge arena right Jay-Z could sell out the Yankee Stadium if he wanted to and I actually seen Jay-Z at the Yankee Stadium it was him and Eminem that was it it was him and Eminem on tour and they sold that whole thing out right so so you already know that a, a small like intimate venue like Webster Hall is going to be sold out quick right so they had tickets that were going for sale for like five hundred dollars a thousand dollars I mean we talking Jay-Z right in a small intimate setting where he's not all the way up front where you uh, can't touch him like he's right here in your face like it's like going to Irving Plaza or something like that right so anyway Jay-Z he's there and what he decides to do is like perform these he did this before but he decides to perform b-sides so this is b-sides too right so he ain't doing like big pan pan spin and cheese he ain't doing songs like that right he's doing more like um i'm out for presidents to represent me you're i'm out for presidents to represent me like he's doing cough up a lung where i'm from marcy son ain't nothing nice like he's doing like his or like classic b-side joints right and this is fire right because people don't expect a jay-z to come down to like webster hall and like really do this but i guess you know for the money you'll come down to webster hall and do whatever plus you know jay-z lives in new york anyway but um so then you know while he's performing he brings out nas <laughs> Yo, this is fire, right? So Nas performed Whose World Is This, right? Then he performed The World Is Yours, right? And then you know, like, on that part where um, he's like, I'm out for dead fucking presidents to represent me. Then they cut it, boop, and went into, um, I'm out for presidents to represent me. Yeah. And then Jay-Z started spitting. Like, it was crazy. Y'all don't even know, like, the magnitude of, like, how dope this is, right? Because Jay-Z had beef with not like hardcore beef. And I mean, everybody knows this, right? But like to the point where he was like, yo, holla at your baby mama. Let her know what's up. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was like, yo, I, I came in your Bentley back seat. I skeeted in your Jeep, left condoms in your baby seat, you know, to Nas. Like he really disrespected Nas, you know what I'm saying? But that was because he felt like he had to take the gloves off because New York was basically like, yo, Nas is winning this rap battle, Jay. So I don't know what you're gonna do. So he kind of had to like stoop a little low and kind of push a T Drake him when like you are hiding a child. Like lyrically you can't beat me. So you just go and like try to like spill the tea. You know what I'm saying? Um. So I mean it got real nasty. And Jay Z had beef with like Cameron and Jim Jones too because Jay Z was on vacation uh, with Beyonce like one year and Dame Dash is from Harlem, right? And so was Cameron. Cameron's from Harlem too. Jim Jones is from Harlem too. And he signed um, 
Cam Ron and Joel Santana and Jim Jones to Rockefeller while Jay-Z wasn't there. So he didn't really get Jay-Z's approval. Maybe they talked about it a little bit, but he didn't get Jay-Z's approval. And then since, you know, uh, Dame Dash is also the CEO of Rockefeller, he did have in his power to put them onto the record label without Jay-Z's full approval. So Jay-Z comes back and he sees that not only is Cameron on Rockefeller, but now Cameron is the president of Rockefeller. Jay-Z couldn't even do nothing about it, but he just felt some type of way towards Cameron, Dame Dash, and Jim Jones. And they had some straight up beef, right? Um, there's this one story that PD Crack always tells, right? And PD Crack is a member of State Property and he was on Rockefeller too, right? There was uh PD Crack always tells this one story where he was in the uh, studio with Cameron. Cameron dropped a fire ass verse on like one of his songs. Jay-Z came into the studio. PD Crack was new into the rap game. He was like just kind of starstruck, you know, so like a pretty Initiative that he even got a verse from Jim Jones, I mean, from um, Cameron, that he was like real hype and he tried to show Jay-Z like, yo, Jay-Z, yo, listen to this verse I got from Cameron, listen to this verse. So Jay-Z listened to it, he was like, okay, all right, cool. And then he told the engineer, he was like, yo, delete that shit. And the engineer straight up, boop, hit the button and deleted that shit and left uh, PD Crack looking like, wow like crazy so it is dope to see like these like young well not really young but i mean i guess still kind of young successful black men rappers um just like really stepping up to the plate and showing like maturity you know that's the best way i could describe it like straight up maturity you know um let me know what y'all think about this Alright, so this is crazy, right? Because Meek Mill is still on probation, right? So this thing has been going on and on and on for mad long now, ever since like 2007 or 2008, right? Where uh, Meek Mill got arrested, right, for something that he didn't do, right? So what the cops are saying that he did was that he pulled out a gun and pointed it at the police, Right. So that's what they're saying that he did. He got arrested for it. And then instead of him like doing like, let's say, four years in jail or whatever like that, at that time, he opted for probation. Right. And at that time, I think like the probation was like five years. Right. So let's just make something clear real quick. Right. Any young black man who pulls out a gun and points it at the police is a dead man right so that's how you know for a fact that meek mill did not do that at that point you know he did i guess plead guilty or maybe he blew trial or something i don't know but he definitely said you know what i'll do the uh the probation right so they let him out and then ever since then he was on probation so that's like ever since meek mill has been famous he's been on probation right uh signs to rick ross right? i think he was gonna sign the ti at first but then he signs to rick ross Maybach music he's been there like ever since right so as you guys know you know over the years of meek mill just being a successful millionaire every once in a while he gets locked up and put in jail but those are behind like probation violations right so the probation violation like the one that really like made everybody go wow this is crazy is when um he had uh he was in new york and he had like a dirt bike or something like that and he was popping willies in new york right so in New York, when you're on the streets, that is not legal at all to do that on the streets. Uh, but it's not like a crime or anything like that. It's not even a misdemeanor. It's a traffic infraction. So what they, what most of the time the cops will do is they'll write you a ticket. Or even if they arrest you, they'll give you what's called a DAT, a death appearance ticket. And you just got to come back to court like on whatever day that is. Um, and then the judge usually throws out and says, don't ride dirt bikes on Nostrand Avenue or whatever it is, right? Um, so Meek Mill was doing that and the cops arrested him, right? And they let him go like the same day or the next day, right? And then they dropped the charges just like New York always does. But they will, they will arrest you and say, don't do that. But then they'll drop the charges. I don't know why they do it, but they do it like that. It's almost like they want to just teach you a lesson. Like, see, you got locked up. You shouldn't be riding dirt bikes in the street, you know? So anyway, um, after that happened though, uh, Meek Mill then gets called into court by the judge 
of his uh, of those of those people who are in Philadelphia, right? And basically, what the judge is saying to him, and what probation is saying to him, is that he violated probation because he had police contact. So no matter what happened, no matter what the circumstances are, you violated probation because you had police contact. Hold on. Story. I'm gonna pause the story. So this is just like the same thing that happened with this other guy who got shot right alongside of Nipsey Hussle. So Nipsey Hussle got shot and killed, and this guy Kerry Langton was standing right next to him, gets shot too, and now is paralyzed and in a wheelchair. But since he was on probation, he's back in jail because he had police contact or contact with known gang members, even though he wasn't doing nothing crazy, but just standing next to Meek Mill, right? I mean, standing next to uh, Nipsey Hussle right so back to the meek mill story it's kind of the same situation so even though the police drop these charges and it's not like i was out there being a criminal and selling drugs that's not why i had police contact it doesn't matter what the con what the circumstances are around the police contact it only matters that i had police contact so now you go back to jail and remember they gave meek mill two to four years he they put him back in jail right um, and then Jay-Z and Rock Nation tried really, really, really hard to get uh, Meek Mill out of jail, just like they tried really, really hard to stop 21 Savage from being deported. And they ended up actually letting Meek Mill out of jail, right? After only like maybe four months. Thank God, right? So then Meek Mill went on this whole thing about like prison reform, um, trying to stop like the judges from giving unfair sentences to people, trying to stop the judges from like stretching out probation long and long and long because even though his probation was only four or five years back then it's been 12 years now and he's still on probation because they keep extending it and extending it and extending it um because they're saying that he keeps getting into trouble right so we all know that meek mill is not a crime lord or anything like that so i don't know why you would have to continuously to extend the probation i mean meek mill is just a rapper and a businessman and that's what he's gonna do right i don't even think that he wants to do crimes because he'll mess up his life so anyway the 76ers are playing tonight right um, and they're going to be playing in Toronto against the Raptors, right? And so usually Meek Mill, he does like kind of go to like all their games because of course that's a Philadelphia team. He loves his team um, and he, he kind of travels with them, right? So they're going to Canada though, right? In Toronto, which is like right there in Northern New York. That's where Kodak Black ended up when he got arrested at the border. He ended up there by mistake. So that's how close Toronto is to the U.S. I mean, Drake is from there. And anybody who knows about, you know, northern New York, I mean, you can literally hopscotch and you'll end up in Canada. And you'll be like, what the hell? How did I get here? Right? So anyway, the ju uh, probation, you know, as soon as... Meek Mill found out and Meek Mill's lawyers and his team and his managers, as soon as they found out like the 76ers were going to Toronto, they filed a motion to his probation officer saying, can you please approve Meek Mill to go to Toronto just to support uh, the team? And, you know, the probation officer used their brain and said, you know what, Meek Mill ain't no criminal. It's not like he's going to Toronto to, you know, sell drugs or, you know, go on a crime spree. He can't disappear because he's a famous person. And why the hell would he want to disappear? Like, you got albums and stuff to come out with and projects to do and, and shows to do. So you're not, you can't just disappear off the face of the earth and like, like run from the law. So probation said, you know what, approve. Yes, you can go to Toronto, right? So all good, right? But the only thing is that even though probation said that he can go, it has to be signed off personally by the judge, right? And so Judge Brinkley personally is supposed to sign off on it and wasn't answering phone calls, wasn't answering emails. So finally, they Meek Mill sent his lawyer to the courthouse so Judge Brinkley could sign off on this thing personally because even though probation said yes, she still has to sign off on it too and Judge Brinkley denied it, yo. So that's what I'm saying, like this is crazy. If one person from your community gets out, you hate them so much that you want to pull them back in, right? But here's the funny thing though, it's not like Meek Mill's only one person in the community that got out. 
like Judge Brinkley, you got out too. You're from Philly too, right? And you got out too, right? You're a judge. You make good money. Uh, you weren't a lawyer at first, then the DA, then the judge. Uh, you probably have a nice, beautiful, nice 2019 BMW. Like, I'm sure that she's living a good life too. She probably has a mansion or a mini mansion. But the thing is that there's also haters out there. And just because you broke, uh, only not only broke, people could be haters now. You could have a hater who is somebody who has money, right? And Judge Brinkley is a hater, but somebody who has money because probably in her head, she told herself, well, ooh, these heathens, these, these thugs, these gangsters, these low lives that she walked past every day going to school, right? And maybe they made fun of her. Maybe even in school, they made fun of her. Maybe they made her feel less than. Maybe they made her feel not included with the cool kids or whatever the case may be. And then one of those cool kids actually becomes successful through doing the exact thing that she was told not to do. Don't be in the streets. Don't rap and listen to that hippity hoppity music. You know, don't, you know, hang out at all times and nights and go to parties. Meanwhile, Meek Mill was in the streets, is a hip hop artist, did hang out at night and listen and go to all types of parties. And he's successful too. And it's almost like she hates the fact that she had to do so much hard work to be successful and get to where she is, where it seems like Meek Mill has just been partying his way into success, even though he's been working hard as fuck too. But but, you know, she doesn't see it from that angle, though, right? Um, also, the fact that he's seemingly partying his way into success, but is more successful and richer than you. It's the hate that they hate and feel and the envy towards a Meek Mill that they're like, no, he, he's getting pampered. He thinks he's the shit. We need to knock him down the sides. We have to humble this dude. You know what I'm saying? Uh, which is really messed up and biased because the court is supposed to be, you know, unbiased and, you know, a good system for all. But hey, that's what they call justice, right? Um, so even Drake chimed in. And this is fire because, you know, Drake and Meek Mill had their beef just like a Nas and Jay-Z. And of course, Drake is going to be there at the game. And Drake is going for the Raptors. He's going for the opposite team while Meek Mill is going for the 76ers. But that's cool. That's what makes it dope. And Drake is like, yo, they got to let Meek into the city. It's only right. We got a classic series on our hands. And then he tags Michael Rubin and Meek Mill, right? And this is so dope, right? So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, the game is tonight, right? And actually, it's like in five hours so me probably ain't gonna go uh which is fucked up yo um let me know what y'all think about this now listen man i don't know if it's love i don't know if it's loyalty i don't know if it's money but uh jade ain't playing around right now so she's like i'm in a good mood after seeing poppy right you see she's in the car she's listening to six nine like everybody is like snitch nine this six nine this and six nine that you know what i'm saying snitch nine this and snitch nine that um you know people are saying like he could never show his face in new york again he could never show his face in brooklyn everybody hates him you know everybody's calling him a rat bastard uh his baby mom said she's a rat uh, that he's a rat and that you know it's easier to come back from being a hoe than to being a rat um she's basically trying to distance herself from him and i get it because you know in the streets man if you a rat and you pissed off people they will come after your kids they will come after your mom they will come after your girl so she's trying to distance herself from a rat and say that yeah 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 he is a rat he's a rat yup yup him though that's him not me type shit you know what i'm saying um and i get it and i understand man so a lot of people have been turning their backs on six nine but not jade and it's crazy because at first when she came out she had the six nine tattoo on her shoulder people just thought like jade was straight up cloud chasing right but it seems like she's still here now he hasn't been locked up for that like in all seriousness he hasn't been locked up for that long he's been locked up since like november so december january february march april may 
uh, so like five or six months now, right? And I heard, to be honest with you, that man's coming home by September, right? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you snitching on everybody, right? So she's like, hell yeah, when he get out, he gonna want some pussy. He's still a millionaire, so I'm gonna just stick with the dude, right? Or, or, or. Maybe she, and I can't call it because I don't know, right? Because it does seem like loyalty. I ain't gonna lie to you, right? Or, you know, she could really be like, I love this man. I understand what happened. Um, they turned on him, so that's why he turned on them. Um, and I am going to ride or die for him no matter what. Who am I to say whether her love for 6 9 is genuine or not? You know what I'm saying? All I'm saying is what it looked like before, but only time tells. And it kind of seems like time is telling that she is down for him, which is so strange, right? So we'll see, right? So a lot of people are like, when he gets home, he's going to have to live overseas and just come out with music and go on tour over there. And I'm sure like over there overseas, like in the Ukraine and Czechoslovakia and the Czech Republic or Slovakia, whatever the fuck, like... <laughs> I'm sure like over there, they don't care. Like Eastern Europe, they don't care about 6 9 snitching on a Kuda B or somebody you know here in New York, right? They're like, what the fuck is a Kuda B, right? But we all in New York do completely care about that. And we're like, how could you tell a Kuda B? You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, we'll have to see. Jade is from the Bronx. I don't know if she like plans on, hey, fucking me and 6 9 are gonna get married and we'll just both live overseas. She got her money, she got her meal ticket and she's there and she will be loyal to the money or if, what if it's not about money that's what i'm saying like i don't know what i do know is that it appears that she is still supporting him against all odds like she's like probably one of the only two people that's still supporting six nine it's like jade and it's like six nine's lawyer and, and that's it um but let me know what y'all think about all this in the comments down below don't forget to like comment share and subscribe um follow me at johnny fastlane that's j-o-n-n-y fastlane on ig and twitter y'all already know what to do peace